All right, our next presentation is Seismic Data Management, A Journey of Progress, Partnership, and Potential. Katie Stewart of Chevron. Katie? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Katie Stewart. I'm currently a subsurface data analyst on the subsurface platform at Chevron, and I'm here today to present the work of our team, uh, which is uh, development of the seismic data management workflows, which has been a journey of progress, partnership, and continued potential. So just to begin, uh, set the, the foundation. So the last, between 2020 and 2023, we have been uh, rolling out the Delphi platform across all of our business units across the enterprise. We've been streamlining seismic data management by migrating all of our legacy tape inventory solutions into a, a new enterprise solution that we've adopted, which is iGlass by the uh, Catalyst team. And then now we're focusing based on that journey of all the rationalization and uh, consolidation, we're now hoping to start to leverage. So we're getting all our data into standardized applications and now we wanna try and focus on leveraging the cloud capabilities and where we uh, wanted to focus on was uh, moving our 3D post stack seismic data into the OSDU SDMS. So where do we want to go? I think this vision is, is pretty common amongst all of us here, but essentially we want to build a common data ecosystem. We want to be able to store our data and load it once and be manage it in the one system, but be accessible by many of our applications across all of our domains. Another key area of focus for us is to remove the system and data fragmentation that we've built up over the past 40 years um, through our solutions, teams, and processes. And then lastly, we want to leverage the cloud capabilities and we want to change the way we ingest our data. We want to adopt smart data ingestion pipelines. We want to remove the need for manual data loading in the future uh, and leverage the cloud capabilities so that we can build knowledge-based ingestion pipelines leveraging machine learning capabilities. So our value proposition, um, I think everybody has very similar value propositions, but we're, we're aiming to improve the performance and accessibility of our data for our end users. In this use case that I'm going to share today, we're improving the performance of accessing seismic data within the interpretation applications. Another massive goal for us is on our journey of uh, migrating to the Delphi platform, we've obviously lifted and shifted a large footprint of data onto the Azure NetApps file storage, which has a large cost and it continues to grow. We know that cloud storage uh, is much cheaper, and so couple that with the improved performance from our end users, uh, we have a good value proposition to start looking into the OSDU to host our, our seismic data. We'd also like to improve our seismic data governance. We have multiple business units across the globe. Um, today, with everything's been manual. We have you know, governance standards, humans implementing them, people make mistakes, so our seismic data governance is another area of opportunity where we see that the OSDU capabilities might be able to help us. And then again, tearing down those siloed, those application silos, so improving the uh, discoverability of the data for the end users across all of their applications is a huge uh, opportunity for us, and tearing down those uh, different application domains so that the data is shared seamlessly between the functions. And then lastly, building a data foundation that positions us to enable rich workflows through automated interpretation workflows and further reducing cycle time. The use of cloud capabilities and getting our data to be stored in one format, in one platform, in the same uh, standards will enable us to scale those uh, automated workflows, uh, which helps us uh, invest in those and then that will hopefully also um, enable us to reduce our cycle time assessing our subsurface opportunities, which is part of our subsurface vision at Chevron. So our strategy for ex execution, how did we want to do this? So over the past, I guess, the three years that you saw, we migrated all of our business units into our Delphi platform. And prior in the 1990s and the 2000s, it may take us about seven years to migrate our interpretation and modeling systems one, from one framework to the other. So we recognize that the amount of disruption, as well as through COVID years, doing this uh, mostly remote 
has been has been pretty huge for our end user community. So we wanted to make sure as we adopt OSDU um, to store our seismic data, we wanted to try and make this change as transparent to the user in terms of the end user consumption pattern. So that was one of the key goals that we had. We also recognized that obviously the OSDU is a maturing platform and our knowledge is also maturing as we work with it day to day. And so we wanted to narrow the scope of what data that we're going to ingest and leverage the OSDU SDMS. And so we wanted to make sure we don't contaminate the, pl contaminate the platform by ingesting absolutely everything and making sure that we just moved our trusted seismic data products. And then we're still enabling our data managers as we do today as being the gatekeepers uh, for pushing any new trusted seismic data products to the SDMS on behalf of the business. We also adopted that the user would continue to still use their scratch areas for their working versions. And then if anything was to come of those versions that needed to be trusted and it was decided that that was a trusted version of a product for Seismic, then we would work with our data managers to get that pushed into the STMS. So again, we were minimizing, we're working very similar how we are today. We're just slowly moving our data to the, the OSDU platform. And then in order for us to move more data to the STMS, we're really looking for the project and workflow services learnings um, so that we can understand what they're doing and that might enable us to move uh, more of our data to the SDMS once we understand some of the capabilities that they're building. And lastly, when I talk about what we have done here in our OSDU SDMS deployment, uh, I'd just like to highlight all our data was migrated at full fidelity and we didn't migrate any data with any compression. So as we worked with our partners, um, we obviously found out when we were developing the process and the, and the workflows and the solutions, there were a few things that we found out. And so as we have our seismic data hosted on our Azure Net Apps today, we couldn't just automatically go and ingest that data as is. So we had a few cleanup uh, issues to resolve um, and standardize some of the taxonomy. So we obviously had to remove some of the special characters because the SDMS doesn't accept that data with those characters. We had to replace some empty spaces with the underscore, and then obviously we replaced any application-specific tags. One of the ones most people will be commonly familiar with is the, you know, the, the realized in the square brackets from the SLB products. So it was an opportunity for us to clean up all of that and rationalize our data uh, repositories with the business before we migrated the data. The other piece around uh, the cleanup it was because once you get your data in OSDU, obviously our maturity, it's harder to change that data once it's in OSDU as it's immutable. Um, so we obviously wanted to try and do that all before we did the migration. The, obviously the other benefits of doing that was that we were able to uh, achieve our seismic volume uniqueness. So removing duplicate copies of seismic and making sure that we were moving trusted, data, trusted seismic data to the OSDU. And then finally, we needed to make sure we had a procedure that we could repoint all of our projects and all of our app data store to the SDMS SD path at scale. So here's just a very simple Mickey Mouse diagram of our workflow um, that I'll talk you through. So the first step that we did was create a seismic data inventory uh, in Excel, which helped us to identify where our issues were with our data. And then we obviously worked uh, with scripts to update and make sure all that data was nice and clean and validate with the business to make sure we were moving the trusted data, seismic data products into the platform. Once that step was fully completed, we were in a position where we could then ingest that data into the OSDU SDMS. Uh, we work with Petrel today, so we were leveraging the Petrel project where it has a workflow called Upload Seismic. Um, it can work in a multi-thread process. You can do it survey by survey. You can upload multiple surveys at the one time, and then you can leverage the task manager to monitor the progress to ensure that your data gets ingested to the uh, OSDU SDMS. And then as and when the uh, files are uploaded into the SDMS, it dynamically updates your point or path to the SD path in the OSDU SDMS in the project. And so once all your seismic volumes from your master seismic project have been uploaded. Your seismic master project is essentially leveraging the OSDU SDMS uh, for seismic streaming. 
And then obviously the final step here is the uh, relinking your app data store. So we were using the Studio Sync. We didn't move a massive amount of data and the Studio Sync worked perfectly well for us. You just basically open up your Studio Sync. Uh, it will see all the changes between your seismic volumes from Studio. And then you just click on the arrow button that will then update that. And again, it does it in a multi-thread process. Another option that you could do if you had access to your database was you could leverage a SQL script to do this as well so that then your app data store is now uh, pointing to the OSDU SDMS path. And then our final step here is obviously our users have uh, all their projects that they work with. And so we worked with the SLB Data Hub service team and they created a procedure to go through and update all of our user projects to make sure all their paths were uh, updated to point to the OSDU SDMS. You could also leverage um, the users doing this themselves, so they could open their project up, they could open up Studio, and then they could resync all of their seismic. That would work uh, well as as well. Um, the only condition around that is obviously it's a far less controlled procedure, and then you're obviously um, requiring your end users to follow instructions and make sure they go through all of their projects and not just their active projects. So uh, we took the option of bulk updating to make sure everybody had changed their project um, paths. And then I guess probably what a lot of people want to know, so what do we have in production? So I'm happy today to say we have two business units that are streaming their seismic data in Petrel from the OSDU SDMS. So one business unit has approximately about 10 users. The second one is about 20 users. So you can see we picked smaller business units. We started off with a very small footprint and then we moved on to uh, scaling that a little larger. We have uh, in one business unit, the first one was two and a half terabytes is what we migrated. So we wanted to learn, uh, let them work in that, see if there was any issues. And then the largest volume that they're streaming is approximately 240 gigabytes. And then in the second business unit, we moved a much larger uh, footprint of data. So we moved three, 36 and a half terabytes of data and their largest volume they're streaming is 140 gig. And this was all achieved when we did our uh, production migration in one weekend with one Chevron data manager for each business unit and uh, with the help of the SLB Data Hub service team. And then all in all, end to end, it took us from uh, testing, developing, and working with our partners to getting this in production took probably about uh, eight months um, of work between us all. So like I said at the beginning, um, we obviously shared a workflow there on how we executed that leveraging products that are commercially available today. We at Chevron didn't do any development. We leveraged the SLB uh, products to get us into the OSDU SDMS. But we also want to uh, be able to ingest our seismic data without having to go through Petrel. Uh, that was just a kind of a quick, can we do it, get us into the SDMS. But we're also working closely with SLB in building their data workspace product to help us build a seismic ingestion workflow product with key features around setting up and defining your data space, setting your, your entitlements, your legal tag user and data groups. We also want to be able to create new 3D interpretation sets, setting up your geometry, your CRS and your boundaries. We also need uh, better Q QC analysis tools. Um, so today we use multiple third party tools for our uh, data managers to interrogate the seismic. And we would like a one-stop shop tool that would enable them to uh, QC the inline crossline graphs, look at byte locations, set up any template definitions from uh, repeatable data from uh, vendors, be able to spatially visualize that data and then also connect to external map services. So again, it just helps with some of that QC um, of the data. And then lastly, a uh, guardrail we gave our partners was that we expect at some point in time or any time that we could have about one terabyte of data um, ingesting into the platform through multiple different users. We have business units that will likely be in the same regions. Um, so that was another guardrail that we said that we're working with them. So we need the ability to have, uh, ingest up to one terabyte of data. And then once we uh, get this product fully working, it's very close to that. 
we will be able to uh, remove the need for data managers to use Petrel to start uh, the loading of uh, the data to the SDMS. So what did we learn? I guess we were hoping for better performance and I'm pleased to report that we do see better performance. So streaming seismic from the OSDU SDMS performs better than streaming it from the Azure NetApps file storage. And you're probably asking, well, how did we measure that? We created um, Petrel workflows where we tested accessing seismic capturing timing metrics. So we ran, I believe it was prefetching to cache, and we also created attribute volumes, and we ran that numerous times against the Azure NetApps file storage. And then we ran the exact same workflows uh, against the OSDU SDMS, and I'm pleased to report we saw improved performance. The OSDU SDMS also improves data governance. Obviously, I spoke about some of the, the pre-work we did with the cleaning up of the special characters, removing of, uh, the uh, spaces and the files, whilst these may seem small, um, having a platform that enforces uh, small things like that, we do see improvements that that can help us in our seismic data governance. And then lastly, I'd like to say that this wouldn't have uh, been so easy and smooth and done in eight months, I believe, um, without our key partnership with SLB and Microsoft, many of which are here today. Uh, we worked uh, many face-to-face -face workshops. We mostly ran our backlog through Teams connections through people in Europe and um, US and, so, and also in India. So it was a great collaboration um, to get us to where we are today. One of our key learnings and SLB and Microsoft actually brought this to our attention before we actually saw this uh, impact was that although the blob storage does provide better performance for accessing your seismic data. It's also tightly coupled with the user demand. So SLB had uh, shown that when you're simulating approximately 20 users accessing different seismic volumes, but on the same storage account, so you see on the blue line, the runtime on the x-axis increases greatly when it hits 20 users. So this was using workflows, again, similar to what I discussed before, uh, prefetching to cache and also uh, just simply scrolling through data sets. So whilst working with Microsoft, Microsoft increased their input output operation capabilities on the storage account and also increased the bandwidth access to the storage account. And you can see highlighted in the orange line that the impact uh, withstands about between 40 and 50 users before we start to see a decrease in performance. But also like to note the decrease in performance isn't anywhere near the default storage account. So whilst we found this information, we kind of halted our enterprise rollout of OSDU SDMS to all of our business units, and we're treading a little bit more carefully and working with our partners, SLB and Microsoft, to do further testing to ensure that we don't see this impact on the end user. And like I said, this wasn't caught by any of our testing, but it was something that SLB obviously were stress testing their products and brought to our attention. So what's next? So obviously we are working with SLB and Microsoft on some of uh, the performance issues for larger scale business units. Uh, I believe we're actually hoping to do some uh, Chevron testing uh, this week or it might be even next week. Um, we're hoping to accelerate our migration of the 3D post stack footprint across uh, our, all of our business units through the OSDU SDMS. We have not had any reports from those two business units of any major issues. We've not had to roll back um, and things are going extremely well. We also have a group that are looking to take on the challenge of 2D SegWi and how we get that into the OSDU SDMS and we're working with SLB on that. We have another group in Chevron looking at pre-stack, uh, looking at the file format integration with the SDMS. 
And then obviously like at the very beginning as well as moving to the Delphi platform, we have been consolidating a lot of our seismic acquisition information and physical tape inventory into our one solution, which was uh, iGlass. And so we're looking with the maturity of the EDS, so external data services in the forum to see how, given we have our interpretation data moving into the OSDS DMS, how might we leverage external data services to try and marry up and bring those data sets together. We also need to look and work on our strategy around what bulk data we store in our OSD platform versus what we're going to access via external data services to make that clearer. Now that we're starting to see that we can move our data to the SDMS, we really need to set a strategy and make it very clear about what we intend to move to our OSD platform and then what we intend to access via external data services. And then we also want to look at automated data storage tiering based on usage. So obviously moving data in the platform to hot and cold um, storage, which will also help us to enable further cost savings. And lastly, like I said, I'm here as part of a much larger team, uh, many of whom couldn't be here today, but their names uh, are up on the screen for you. You can see it's a fantastic partnership between Chevron, SLB and Microsoft. Um, so thank you for, for listening and I'm happy to take any questions and answer if I can. Thank you. Uh, Abhi Goswami, Shell. One question is about, uh, based on the two business unit you showed, whether it's operational, when you load data to OSTU and then you bring it back to an end user to work on it, you mentioned they work in the scratch area. So how do you, in this process of going back and forth, ensure that any lineage that you are incrementally building up in that data for the work that's being done on-prem is actually captured? Yeah, when the, um, so that's a good question. I guess what we're trying to do, like I said, is just move the final products. And so we have to make it clear to them when they move it into their working, it's disconnected, right? And then they're working on it. And then today, as they do, they have to work with their data manager to put it back in. So yeah, we do break a little of the lineage opportunities there. Yeah. Hello, again, Stephen Shearwater. Uh, what are you looking at for the pre-stack data formats, or how has your initial investigations gone there? I believe, so it's a colleague of mine, um, I can put you in touch with him for more information, but I believe it's a, a Chevron format that we're looking at at the minute um, that we've developed. I think it might be proprietary as well, so I can't talk too much more to that. Hello, Tor Johannesson from Kongsberg. Thanks for a really good presentation. I just have a question. Um, you mentioned that the end users that were uh, looking at the data and working with it in, in, in Petrel, they experienced a performance improvement, which was uh, great to hear. Uh, could you share a little bit of your reflections on how much of it is attributed to OSDU and, and, and how much from the Microsoft platform or, or other places? Do you have some thoughts around that? I do not have any thoughts on that other than it's better. I don't know if it's related to Microsoft or whether it's OSDU. Um, I can't answer that, I'm afraid. Um, I saw on the slide that you use uh, ZGY uh, data. Did you try with VDS? We used uh, yeah, we used ZGY data. Um, we didn't use VDS. We did do some initial testing uh, early last year on VDS, but we um, didn't get such great results uh, from the VDS format. Ihide Longe, ConocoPhillips. Can you help us understand the architecture? Because you mentioned OSD and you also mentioned Studio. Why do you have both of them with SLB products and how do you keep them synchronized? Yeah, so like I said at the start, we were trying to minimize the change for our end users. And so obviously we're also taking some baby steps, right? So we've gone through a lot of change for them. We wanted to keep their end 
their consumption pattern the same. So working with SLB, uh, we have our studio, that's where we load all our seismic final data products today, and then they access that from studio. So we worked with SLB to be able to just base, it's basically repointing, right? The, the studio pointer points to the file in the SDMS and then Petrel can access uh, the data from the SDMS that way. Again, it was purely mostly to do with making sure we didn't make too much change to the end user. In fact, many of them, if they hadn't noticed the performance improvement, might not even know that they're actually consuming that data from the SDMS. So we're just kind of moving that baby steps to see what works and learn, and then we hopefully want to graduate out of uh, studio. But that's going to be a longer term journey, given all of the linkages to uh, interpretation data, etc. All right, Katie, thank you very much. Thank you.